Hello and welcome. It is 8.30. It's the 24th day of November 2021. It is a bright blue sky, 53 degree fire weather warning Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday here in Ventura, California. And I am your guide to all the tabletop role playing game news, weather, sports, controversy, speculation, and general internet nonsense. It is the OGGM and we have a picture of Strixhaven up. I use this picture because no other reason than I like elephants and my mom likes elephants and elephants are cool. Uh, so, yep, we are speculating slash talking about all the controversy that is going around the latest in the long line of Magic the Gathering conversions to D&D, the Dick Strixhaven curriculum of chaos, the magic hogwarts school of mages thing and everybody a lot of people are up in arms about this one and upset about this one because wizards woke changes what did you do to my D, &D? wizard school D, D prom okay well let's it did you get this upset when they did a magic school last time because they have and several other gaming companies have done D, &D magic schools uh this is not the first time we've tried to milk the Hogwarts uh, Harry Potter franchise for tabletop role-playing games. Uh, I mean, there's literally an entire country called Fae that's basically all about wizards and teaching magic and controlling magic. Uh, it's a mageocracy and mages ruling and bringing in the next generation of red wizards. So there has already been products about wizard school and wizard college so but this one because it's coming off of the tail end of all the other latest nonsense from wizards of the coast has got people upset they're all concerned it's going to be woke and it's going to be D, D prom and it's going to ruin D, D even further and how dare you do that to my game i would never have D, D prom in my game yeah you probably would all right so uh, we don't have enough information yet to know exactly what's going on with Strixhaven, but this is just some speculation on my part to address what I think is going on with this product. And remember, this is speculation, which means I could be completely 100% wrong. I have no actual insight into the insanity that is Wizards of the Coast at this point in time. Yes, I know in the past I have been labeled a Wizards of the Coast shill defender. I just talk about the news and... I am one of the rare, rare, rare people who just don't care enough to be upset about the changes Wizards of the Coast is making to Dungeons & Dragons. It's their game. They can do whatever they want with it. I'm not the target audience anymore. At no point in time has Wizards of the Coast specifically attacked me, the OGGM. They have made some statements that have turned into other things, blah, blah, blah. That's not the point of this vlog. So I know people get upset at me because I'm not as angry as they are. And I've received a lot of posts about Strixhaven because I've been talking about it because it's news and that's what I do is d, &D tabletop role-playing game news and people are angry at me. And I was like, dude, I can't do anything about what Wizards of the Coast does. I just report the news and I try and stay reasonable and unbiased. If you're so upset about this D&D product, you should probably let Wizards of the Coast know through one of the many ways you can contact them. Or you could buy Wizards of the Coast stock and then they have to listen to you because, you know, stockholders, Hasbro, blah, blah, blah. So, speculations on the Magic School. Well, first and foremost, remember, this is a Magic the Gathering setting converted to D&D. So much like the others, uh, Ravinica, Theros, it is separate from Dungeons & Dragons. So it is not in the same vein as Tasha's or Witchlight. It is completely separate. It has nothing to do with the D&D story. Not that there is a D&D story, but if we're talking that the sacred D&D timeline is the Forgotten Realms and all the core books, then the last core book we had was Tasha's. Because Ravenloft is a demiplane and an adventure. And Witchlight is an adventure and a demiplane, although both introduce new rules, they are optional. Tasha's was the last rule book. The next rule book will be Mordecanids. So if the sacred timeline is Tasha's and Mordecanids, 
this is nothing to do with D&D Central. It's a Magic the Gathering world separate unto its own. You can incorporate it into your D&D game if you want, or you could run it as a completely separate universe that has nothing to do with the Forgotten Realms, D&D, normal whatsoever. It is totally separate, and it's a self-contained story. So how much or how little effect it has on the Dungeons & Dragons Sacred Timeline post-Tasha's that's up to you because it's it's optional it's separate it's so yeah it it has no real bearing on the sacred D, &D timeline such as it is so just remember that now there's a lot of things that people are are, are expecting from this they think because they saw the picture of the dance and they're like nye, 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 this and woke and nye, nye, this and it's like based upon what i've seen so far here's what i think they're doing and I could be wrong. We know that they are changing the game post Witchlight and that there will be something happening in 2024. We know that there are certain expectations of how the game should be played that Wizards of the Coast is receiving information on. And they know that this, there's a desires for their target audience want changes to the game to embrace this new way people think D and D should be played, and yes, I blame you, Critical Role. Um, and whether that's wrong or right, it doesn't matter. It's, it's it's all a matter of what Wizards of the Coast thinks and what Hasbro will let them get away with. So there's a lot of experiments in Strixhaven. There's a lot of things they've never tried before, at least not blatantly tried before. And it's a perfect setting for them to experiment with new different things like social encounters and the idea of resolving conflict without combat and tavern games and all fun little college type things, rushing a fraternity, investigating a murder, because it's a self-contained book. So basically, it's more of just a worldwide playtest where you can buy Strixhaven, I mean, which light, whatever this thing is called. What's this thing called? Uh, Strixhaven. See what you like and what you don't like, and then either incorporate it or toss it to the side. And they're going to watch that and see which one of these ideas actually takes and which ones are stupid. Because they made a lot of statements in Tasha's, and then we saw by the sales of the products that came out after Tasha's, some of those ideas didn't work because sales dropped. I'm sorry if you think otherwise, but no, I've seen the numbers. Post Tasha leading into Witchlight, sales are down. They have gone down 8% since last quarter, and they've gone down almost 10% from this time last year. And from the general scheme of sales compared to a year ago, almost 80% from the point of view of like, individual retailers 80 percent sales but from the general overview of the worldwide sales it's gone down 10 percent since this time last year which is huge so wizards of the coast hasbro's lost money after tasha's and they haven't made that money back yet so strixhaven is a perfect place to experiment with what people are saying they want to see in the game like social encounters and tavern games and chances to role play my character because they made changes in Tasha's and then they saw those changes didn't work so they back paddled and they said oh no no remember when we said alignment was gone we changed that remember when we said this this and this yeah no we changed that so here's their chance I'm sorry here's their chance to experiment to try things out in the Strixhaven setting, see how well Strixhaven sells, and then see, based upon these surveys that they're doing now, post every product, if it worked. And if it worked, like social encounters, then you might see that graduate into whatever is coming out in 2024. And if it doesn't work, like D&D &D prom, social encounters, love stories, tavern games, whatever else we're going to see in Strixhaven. If Strixhaven doesn't sell the way they think it's going to sell, like Ravenloft and Rhyme of the Frostmaiden and the other products that came out after Tasha's, then they can backpedal 
and not have to include those rules because they know, oh, it's not as popular as people said. Because people said they wanted changes, but when Wizards of the Coast made those changes in Tasha's, sales went down. Sales went down. So even though you're, they said, oh, I want this, this, and this, doesn't really seem like they did. Because after Tasha's, sales went down. And Wizards of the Coast backpedaled on a lot of the things that they changed in Tasha's. Even if it was subtle changes, but there were changes. So here is Strixhaven, separate from normal D&D product. The last D&D product of the year going into the big crunch before 2024. What does Wizards of the Coast target audience, which I am not a member of, want? We know what they say they want, but do they really want it? Here's a product that's completely separate. If it sells, we know this is actually what people want. But if it doesn't sell, like Ravenloft, if sales continue to drop, then we know, in fact, even though people are saying what this, this is what they want, this is not what they want. Plus, there'll be surveys after Strixhaven. Wizards of the Coast is doing all these surveys now. So if they survey people after Strixhaven and people are like, yeah, no, that was a stupid idea. The Wizards of the Coast are going to go, okay, let's not make the same mistake. We won't include these things that you say you want to see. So I know that everybody's worried about Strixhaven and D&D &D prom and woke and stuff. But really, I think it's more of just them experimenting with optional rules to see if they work or not. Which from a point of view of Wizards of the Coast compared to all the other mistakes they've made lately, that's actually a good idea of theirs. It's the first good idea they've had in a while. Because if they want to maintain their small little audience... They have to actually know what it is they're going to buy as opposed to what they say they want. Because you said you wanted these changes. Wizards of the Coast made the changes, and it turns out you didn't really want them because their sales dropped. And they don't want a repeat of that, especially if there's competition coming their way, and especially with 2024 coming up. At least that's what I think, and I could be wrong. And remember, if you're upset at Wizards of the Coast, don't get angry at me. Get angry at them. Let them know you're upset. Send them a letter. Send them an email. Call them. Do not buy their product. Post vlogs about why people should not buy their product. Don't support them. But don't get angry at me because your anger isn't going to resolve everything. If you don't like the changes Wizards of the Coast make it to Dungeons & Dragons, let them know. Because otherwise, one... They don't care if you're not giving them money. And two, if they don't know you're upset about it, they're not going to change. Write them a letter. Send them an email. Call them. Let them know. Because otherwise, they're going to keep making stupid experiments like Strixhaven. But I could be wrong. So maybe I'm completely and utterly wrong. I don't know. You tell me what you think of my pondering theory of what they're trying to do with Strixhaven. Do you think I'm correct? Do you think I'm incorrect? Do you think I should shut up? Let me know. Support me. Subscribe. Have a great holidays. I should probably get to this whatever this phone call was. I will talk to you later. See ya. Look, it's an elephant casting a spell. That's just cool.